I'm super excited. I'm about to do a design with one of those new NXP applications processors, and it's going to be awesome. It's small, power efficient, inexpensive, really capable, and absolutely amazing. Uh, except there is one problem. I'm no big expert on power management, and I'm worried that my power solution won't be that small, efficient, or inexpensive. And even if I was an expert, who's got the time, or board space for that matter, to mess with all of that when there's so much other stuff I need to do in my design? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Many of today's best processors are easy to design with, but tricky to power. But I've got a solution for you. My guest today is Christopher Bahar from Rome Semiconductor, and we're going to discuss some super fantastic power management ICs that are small, efficient, and won't blow up your bomb. Get it? Bomb, B-O-M, like Bill of Ma... Anyway, <laughs> and before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about the Rome PMIC BD7184 7AM WV. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure, Amelia. All right, so we are here today to talk about power management ICs and specifically the BD7184 47 AM WV, which is a mouthful. But Chris, what is this PMIC all about? First and foremost, this is a system PIMIC for NXP's IMX8M mini applications processor, which is a very popular quad core processor with hardware accelerators for audio and video processing for a wide range of consumer and industrial applications. So we're talking about smart speakers, sound bars, AV receivers, vacuum cleaners, single board computers, and the like for all sorts of equipment in the industry. Okay, Chris, so what do you mean exactly by system PMIC? So ultimately, this is a single device that will supply the power to the processor and all the subcomponents, including the memory, like the DDR flash, and peripherals like the Wi-Fi, SD card, etc. Okay, so what if designers want to choose a different processor? What can you do for me here? It's actually uh, quite nice in that aspect because the BD71847 is both OTP configurable and software programmable. So indeed, it can support other similar processors, such as those from Rockchip, AM Logic, NXP's Digital Networking SOC, and the like. Power on sequences, output voltages, power state transitions, all the control can be configured in any for a particular processor or system configuration. Cool. Okay. So how much work is really required to get this PMIC working with the i.MX8M Mini? So out of the box, the BD71847 is OTP configured to work specifically with this apps processor. It's an all-in-one power management solution that supports their hardware power control signaling. And of course, it is also on their EVK and SOM reference designs. So fully tested and supported by NXP themselves. And I guess the final point would be that it is going to work with our upcoming derivative, the IMX8M Nano version of their apps processor too. Cool. Okay, so in previous designs, people would run discrete power solutions that would require many external components, like external switching FETs and power inductors. Is this still the case with this PMIC? For the case of PIMIX specifically, the primary appeal is for the smaller solution space due to all the added integration. So, of course, for this device, our FETs are all integrated into the package and only require small external 0.47 microhenry inductors. So we can also integrate further to reduce the system bomb by adding power multiplexers to support the 3.3 to 1.8 volt switching rails required by SDXC or the buffered 32 kilohertz clock or the RTC reset signals. And the pinout is designed to match the IMX8 M Mini for easy and compact PCB routing. So in total, the solution eventually comes out to be a 250 millimeter square SOM containing all the rails needed for the necessary components. Additionally, we designed this part with considerations for use on low-cost Type 3 non-HDI six-layer PCBs. So ultimately, it's a known good proven solution for the NXP ADEM minis. EVK and some reference designs. Okay, so Chris, what about controlling the PMIC? 
So the control is mostly standard in the sense that we can use a standard I squared C signal. It also includes some glueless hardware control interfaces to match NXP's consisting set of GPIOs for signals like PIMIC standby required or PIMIC on required. And additionally, we do have a lot of open source Linux and Android drivers for this to help configure for the particular application. Okay, cool. So when talking about power, efficiency is always a key factor, especially in some of these applications that can be completely battery powered. So what's the power efficiency story here, Chris? So for power efficiency, we can actually see on this slide that the number range is closer to the 80%, 85, depending on, of course, your output currents that are required. We have control modes for PWM, PFM, kind of depending on the load current that's being used. And we do have an auto mode for a lot of these different buck regulators. So it will automatically switch between modes depending on the situation that's required. We also have another slide here that shows the actual SOC power consumption's worst case specs. And these are actually fairly conservative with the BD71847's worst case performance specs. So here we can see total power consumption in watts for the total application usage. And we can see average power supply draws close to 2.37 watts from some of the most power hungry rails. So if the use case doesn't approach the max current load, smaller inductors and capacitors can be used to help lower the bomb cost and solution size. So for example, running four-core Dreisen benchmark with a full-on VPU and GPU, the IMX 8M Mini consumes only half of the worst-case power consumption that we list. And with that, you only need half the output capacitance, and a standard 1008 inductor can be used instead of the 1210 size inductor. Okay. So what about the DDR rails? For design, sometimes manufacturers have different system requirements for needing DDR3L, DDR4, LP DDR4, which all use different power rails. So how does your PMIC handle these points? We can actually use the same inventory for the high performance, the power efficient, and the low cost system designs. Of course, the BD71847's default OTP setting is actually for LPDDR4. And this is primarily on buck 8 or the NVCC DRAM, which is 1.1 volts. So if you wanted to use the DDR4 or the DDR3L instead, there is a tool that NXP has for the NXP 8M Mini where we can set the firmware to reconfigure this buck rail 8 to the correct DDR voltage as part of the DDR init sequence. Okay. So ultimately, to reduce the DDR4 bomb costs, if you wanted to, you could also potentially use the PIMIX LDO5, which is not currently needed by the SOC and can also be used to power the DDR4 at the uh, 2.5 VPP required specification. However, for this, the PIMIX OTP would need to be changed, and thus we did create a secondary part number for this, so you could just order it directly. And that just has the suffix ending in the S01. Okay, cool. So Chris, is there anything we need to look out specifically when we're designing this PMIC into specific designs? Oh, sure. I think probably one main concern to consider is to make sure that we size the power rail correctly for the transient response. So for example, if we had a transient response and we needed a 100 nanosecond response time for a zero to three amp step, we would probably need a 44 picofarad capacitor to recover within the 10 microseconds needed to get within our plus or 1% specification. Also for this chip, something to consider is how 100 nanoseconds are required from detection to the drop of the feedback to the internal hide side FET to turn on. So for current measurements, stability requires your resistance to also be under 40 milliohms. Additionally, we should make sure that the output capacitors are sized properly for stability. So regardless of load for our PIMIC, a minimum capacitance of 22 picofarads are required for stability. And then I guess finally, we do have this integrated 3.3 volt and 1.8 volt power mux. So we do need to note that this is not just a simple load switch. So we do need to add an output capacitor to avoid some droop on these uh, parts. So for this, we can simply add a 22 picofarad capacitor to make sure that we can reach our 150 milliamp max specs. It just should be noted that this capacitance will scale linearly with current. So depending on how much current is going to be required on the line, we can always scale that capacitor up as required. 
Okay. So you mentioned at the beginning that we can always adjust this PMIC to be used with other processors. So specifically, what control mechanisms are in place to support this? So for the rails specifically, of course, we can change things like the output voltage. You can change the power on sequence and the rail to rail power on delays. And we show some of these waveforms in the slide to the right. And of course, we can disable any unused rails that are not being used for design. And then alternatively, depending on the device, maybe power state transitions could be different. So we can also handle alternative power state transitions for like a deep sleep mode versus a fresh reboot. And finally, from the control side, we also have GPIOs available for the power control via the power button. So with this power button, typically this is connected to the IMX 8M Mini, but we do have a capability to have this connected to the PIMIC directly if the app's processor requires it. And when it's connected to the PIMIC, we have options that you can do for the long and short button presses, whether that's changing the duration or the resulting actions for that. You can use this button press as an alternative to the IMX8 Mini's PIMIC on required signal. Cool. Okay. So another technical concern that typically comes up when handling power is heat and thermal design considerations. So how is your PMIC's thermal performance? Primarily with the thermal performance, we see that board size, of course, has the biggest impact. But at the same time, we want to get the, a very small size. So we have been able to manage this heat. You can see in these pictures on this slide, comparing a 55 millimeter by 55 millimeter board versus a 55 millimeter by 55 millimeter board, we can see a significant power decrease there. Of course, copper weight can also be a way to manage some of this heat dissipation. But ultimately, what we've been able to get is we've been able to get this PIMIC working on a six layer board at 120 millimeter by 120 millimeter, working at 38 degrees C or a 10 layer board at 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter at 65 degrees C. So we are able to handle the heat for multiple design considerations, depending on what's required. Okay, cool. So what kind of design resources do you have available for me to use your PMIC? For this, we have a platform design guide, reference schematic, bomb layouts, along with handy schematic checklists that can help designers make sure they don't fall into those common pitfalls. And of course, from an eval kit perspective, we have a standalone eval kit that allows users to quickly check the power characteristics. You can see this in the picture to the left. Or you can use NXP's EVK and SOM board to see it working in the actual application itself. Cool. Okay. So how is the part number lineup separated? I'm a little confused there. Ultimately, we have uh, three main parts for this device. Kind of a standard consumer industrial part, which is the BD71847 AMWV-E2. And this is just kind of our standard negative 40C to 85C with no special things around it per se. We have another one with the suffix LBE2, which basically stands for kind of extended industrial customers, right? We are guaranteeing continuous on time for about five years and have designed it to meet the 100K power cycle kind of requirements that some of these long-term industrial applications require. And then for the 8M specifically, we also have another partner, BD71837 AMWV, just for the different PIMIC for other rails. Cool. Okay. So Chris, since you're targeting industrial devices, what's the lifespan story look like here? This is definitely a consideration that we've gotten from a lot of our customers. In the sense I would that imagine. <laughs> I don't want my PIMIC to go EOL after five years and I still need to keep my design. So that being said, we do have a 10-year minimum guarantee for our PIMIC devices here. And Chris, are these devices available now? The uh, BD71847 is for the consumer. The standard industrial parts are in production now. But that extended industrial part, the LBE2 part, uh, is planning to release in Q4 2019. All right. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. I'm going to click that link and go to a mauser.com page for more information. Well, Chris, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Rome Semiconductor. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. 
or head on over to YouTube, keyword EE Journal.